Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tides of Death. With us, we have Green Zerg and Pokemon challenges together, and we're going to talk about how they first met. That's going to be years later. I think three years later for Jan and like oh, 10, 15 years Man. later for you? Something like that, yeah. At least 15 I think I'm probably years later like for you. About 15, yeah. I'll probably just hit 30. Mm-hmm. And the two of you meet on a ship, um, a boat. Nick, your character, uh, John, is mm -hmm. the new recruit for this boat. Um, let's talk. I'm the new recruit. You okay. are the new recruit. You're coming on aboard this this merchant vessel that sails all around. It goes out to mm -hmm. Solemn. It comes back to Arcadia. It does stuff around Arcadia. Then it goes out to Solemn. Then comes back. Yada yada yada. Um, and you are one of the new recruits here. Tell us why are you joining this ship? What happened to the last one that you were on? Or your? I think it was probably an argument with the captain now this is a dirty word so i don't throw it around easily i wouldn't exactly say it was a, a mutiny but i think there was perhaps a disagreement over the path that we were taking what we should be dealing with you know maybe some people wanted to do a certain job that involved a little bit of criminal activity the captain didn't really take kindly to it there was a bit of an argument and before things got too heated I think John had realized that, you know, he'd made enough money on that job. He'd sort of worked his way in with all the crew. He knew the people. You know, he finds it interesting to meet new people and get to know them and kind of make them like him. So it sees it as a challenge whenever he meets someone new to sort of get them to like him, basically. Mm -hmm. So he kind of had his fill with this, this crew. There was this argument about what they should be doing next. He just made a big haul. They were in a new town. So he just thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm leaving. Leave you guys to your fight before things get too bloody. I'm off. See you guys later. You know, maybe we'll run into you in another life. And um, I think as at this point, John's probably a pretty accomplished sailor and probably finds it pretty easy to find a new job. Yeah. You've got the skills. You can chat with whoever the captain of this vessel is. Uh, they'll hire you, bring you on board. You meet the quartermaster. You meet the cook. You meet the kitchen boy, some 12-year-old little scrapper who thinks he's you know on top of the world because he's working on a boat um sure i think i give this kid like a silver coin or something like that you know yeah in memory of back when you were in such a position <laughs> when i started out yeah yeah and then you'll get introduced to the crew uh archie you have worked your way up from rower to sailor um i don't know if that's actually a vertical that might be a horizontal shift Rowers need to be strong and have good timing, but to be a sailor, you need a lot more skills. You need to be fast, you need to be dexterous, you also need to be able to be strong as well. Um, and they find that your particular set of skills are work a little bit more, uh, fill that um, sailing potential a little bit better than the rowing potential. So you've moved on to sailing, but your contract is still, well, still what it is. And the two of you guys will meet for the very first time when Nick gets brought aboard the boat, but like you still haven't left port yet. And so that first night, tables get brought up onto the main deck, food gets served, and the two of you happen to just be seated next to each other at this um, dinner table. So, uh, All right. Nick, take it away. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sitting down at the table. I see the food come out, and I'm pretty quickly, you know, after spending a lot of time in the kitchen myself, I'm getting the measure of how good the food's going to be on this ship here. And I'm waiting for the food to come, and I sort of elbow Archie next to me and say, So, is the cook much good on this ship? What kind of things do you guys eat? Um, Archie, not the most talkative person at this point, just kind of looks over to him. Looks looks like kind of up and down, just shrugs. Says like it's all right. All right, okay, all right. Well, I guess uh, I'll be the judge of that. What do you say? What do you say your name was, friend? It's my first day. I uh, extend the hand to you. I'll look at your hand. I'll look you in the eyes. I'll just say very sternly, Archie B. Alder, sir. No need for the sir. No need for the sir. I think we're all uh, 
the same rank here, unfortunately. Uh, me? My name's uh, Jock. Nice to meet you, Archie. Um, oh, nice. How long have you been on the boat? Three years now, I think. Three years. I'll kind of look away and look towards the kitchen to see if the food's already coming out. I turn to the guy to the other side. Elbow here. It's like, it's like getting blood out of the stone with this one. Turn back around. Say so three years and you seen much of the world, you know, you've been anywhere nice. And some good things. How's the captain? Oh, he's been on this boat. Captain's good. Treats us well. So I like to hear. I, do you know what? I got the feeling when I first met him. He seemed like a good guy. You know, this kind of guy that you can have a bit of a laugh and a joke with. You know, doesn't take himself too seriously. That's the kind of guy I like to work with, you know? I say, giving him a, a knowing look, since uh, that's not exactly the vibe I'm getting from Archie so far. He seems very stern. Mm -hmm. Archie kind of... You know, he's, he's been on this boat in, uh, for a while. He's seen people come and go, and he's seen, like, people talk a lot. He's not really big into people who, like, try to, try to like, talk him into things. He, he just He's just here. He wants to do his job. He wants to work off his desk. So he just looks at him, and he nods, and he says, yep. Oh. He's kind of just kind of pegging him as this kind of person who is... Um, who is uh, all talks, but nothing behind it, you know? A bit of a talker. So I think John's kind of feeling it. You know, this is my first night on the ship. I've got a lot of people to meet. I'm not going to force this guy to talk to me if I don't have to. So I'll probably turn my attention to maybe the guy opposite me on the table or the guy next to me. And I'll probably, you know, like I said, I like to go out of my way to get people on board, make people like me. So I've marked Archie. We'll come back to you. But I spend the rest of the night making small talk with maybe the other people around me. Keeping an eye on Archie here and there, you know, maybe I'll throw the odd comment towards him, but seems like I'm not getting too much out of him. Well, give me a charisma check, Mr. Winter. Uh, Winter, okay. I'm sorry. Or how will you integrate yourself with the crew this night? 24. Yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, you, you're a personable fellow, everyone else on the ship. They like to meet new people as well. And here's this new guy, he's coming on. He's in his 30s. He's a man about the world. He knows his shit. It's no more none of this like rookie business where you gotta like train a new crew member. This is a proper sailor on their boat. And they're pleased yeah. to have you. And you like to talk, and they like to hear stories. You guys are gonna spend long months together with just the the fifteen of you or twenty of you or whatever it is, like in close quarters. Maybe that's a relatable thing right now in this day and age to be in close quarters with the same group of people for a fucking year at a time. So it's important yeah. to get along, <laughs> as we as we now know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, everyone seems to be pretty happy and jovial. Captain comes by, puts a hand on your shoulder, asks like, "How are you getting along? I see you've uh, you're sitting between Archie and and Carl. These are good folks ah. over here. Carl, indeed, Captain. Carl's been with us for 15 years, haven't you, Carl? Carl gives a bit of a nod and a head bob. And he uh, pats Archie on the shoulder. And Archie's, uh, like you, is kind of new, three years in. Got another, ooh, what is it, 40 years left before you pay off your debts? <laughs> oh, good luck, Archie. John, count your blessings that you didn't end up like him in life. And uh, keeps going down the, the ship to you know meet the other people. And few people have been hired in this situation. Uh, starts to introduce them to their neighbors and chat about them. So I, I lean into the... To Carl, I say, did he just say 40 years to pay off the debt? What did he do? Whispering so as Archie isn't over here. Actually, 52 years, says. 52 years? What? What? What did he do? Did he steal the captain's wife or something? The guy shrugs and is like, hmm? you've tried to talk to him. He's a tight-lipped fella. I don't really know exactly yeah. what's going on, but some sort of judgment in Clydesdale? It's like he spends his whole days hauling barrels. Look at the size of his arms. I know, right? He's a nice guy, Good though. Friends doesn't have. really, uh... Keeps his shit together. Doesn't really say much else. You know, talking's one thing, but I like a sailor who can do his job properly. The guy bobs his head up and down. Certainly. So how about this stew, Carl? What do you think? Is this... Good, bad, is this standard? I say, like, lifting up and, like, spooning it back into my bowl. It's, like, watery. He, like, 
sits up and loudly says, I think the new kitchen boy didn't put enough salt in it. Where is that little bastard? I'm going to give him a knocking around the ears. And you can see oh. the kitchen boy like dart it to the staircase in like <laughs> terrored panic. And Carl gives a chuckle, knowing full well that the stew is fine, but just like trying to instill a little fear in the child. Sure, yeah, a little bit of fear is good. I, uh, you know, I eat my stew. Maybe take a hunk of that like weird hard tack bread Ugh. that people on ships used to have and dip it in my stew so it isn't like hard as a rock. Eat a little bit more. Say, um, no wonder you're so grumpy all the time, Archie. You're here for another 40 years? What did you do? Did you sleep with the captain's wife or something? I say, hoping that nobody heard me repeat the same joke. <laughs> Archie's gonna put his put his stew down and look at, uh, look at John. He's gonna say, I got fucked over, John. That's what happened. Over. Oh. And then he's going to continue eating. I raise my eyebrows at the guy opposite me as he, as Archie goes back to eating. The guy just shakes his head and puts his face in his stew. Well, you know, talking about getting fucked over, I say to the table, no, you guys, you look like you like a story, right? Let me tell you a story, okay? So on my previous boat, we've been sailing around, okay? And we end up in this town called... Shirebrook. Weird town, full of wizards, odd folk. We're there, we, you know, we're just picking up some stuff, some components, some books from Redport and bringing them to this wizard down in Shirebrook, okay? Now, while I'm there, luckily I get picked. I'm delivering the stuff up to this guy's tower. So I've got, you know, I've got a, a bag of like a box of books that I'm fucking carrying, I'm sweating, you know, I'm dragging them. I'm dragging them, I'm catching my breath and Looking around, back at the ship, no one's helping me. I'm dragging it back, and finally, we get up to this guy's tower. I open the crate for him, and this guy's grumpy as all hell. I, you've never seen, I mean, it's worse than... I give a nod towards Archie on my left here, and, um... Well, you know, grumpy, real grumpy. And this guy's, you know, he's, he's cussing me out. Oh, I'm so slow, I'm damaging the books, blah, 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 right? So, as his back's turned, what do I do? Well, I look over on one of his desks. And I see this shining blue potion. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Do you know what? Carl, do you know what I did? I fucking swiped it, right? I grabbed that thing, I shoved it in my pocket, and I said to the wizard, All right, mate, well, you clearly don't want to talk to me, so I'm gone. I ran out of there as fast as I could. Okay, so, later that night, you know, we're in one of the villages around town. Some sort of mine. Place is overrun with dwarfs. You've never seen anything like it. Anyway, I've had a few drinks, and one of the lads, you know, he's hanging me on to drink the potion. Now, I usually wouldn't do something so stupid, but you know, with a bit of peer pressure, people are egging you on to do it. You're gonna do it, aren't you? So I, so I drink the potion and I swear to God, it was like nothing I've ever seen. Immediately, boom, the haze, it goes away. I'm sober as a judge. That's, it is unbelievable. And honestly, it kind of ruined the night, but then I had an idea. You see, I go over to this table of dwarfs. There's like 10 of them sitting over there. They're all slapping each other on the back. You know, they're, they're having a laugh. And I says to him, hey you, dwarfs, look like you're good at drinking down there. Let me tell you, I'm the greatest drinker in Eridon. I could drink you all under the table. No doubt, no problem. Nah, they, they didn't believe it. They, uh, they all put in 10 gold each, at least, at least some of them, I think, put 20 or 30. Well, this wizard's magic potion, that was the easiest 200 gold I ever made in my life. I sat there, I drank wine, I drank beer, I drank anything the bartender had. Didn't even get a little bit drunk. I mean, I, I played it off like I did, you know. Next thing, you know, a few hours later, the dwarves are throwing up their all on the floor. I scoop up my gold, walk back to my crew. It's the happiest night of my life. I could use one of those, says a guy like four places down at the table as he like brings up his ale and is sort of like rocking back and forth. Clearly too tipsy to even like raise a sail at this point. Sure. Hmm. Yeah. Um, give me a charisma check for how it lands, because it sounds to me like that's a fucking great story. But does anyone it's believe a... this tall tale of you stealing potions and drinking dwarves oh, under the table? Shit. <laughs> no, it's too unbelievable, isn't it? Someone else has it's heard this exact same story and pipes up. <laughs> I think I heard the bard back over in Anvil tell this same story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, the bard... 
Yeah, it's the one I can't remember what his name was. Uh, Darby? <laughs> Looks like I'm more Darby? famous than I thought. I don't believe it. Someone says, and some other people kind of like jostle and joke in, and you can see the eyes rolling. Apparently, this is like a famous story that's something that the whole ship heard like six years ago. Um, and they take it jovially, but they clearly like, okay, all right, John's the sort of guy who's gonna like embellish or steal stories for himself or something. Sure. And that's the the yeah. first impression you get to make aboard this boat. Alas. Uh, well, you know, every ship needs a joker. Right, yeah. Uh, Pokemon challenges. Jan, why don't you also give me a charisma check for how people on this ship um, view you so far? 26. Yeah. You might not be the tall tale teller, but you do your job, you're reliable, get shit done, and maybe you don't have a lot of close friends because you're not particularly outgoing or talkative, but there's sort of a consensus that Archie gets his shit done, Archie does his job, and then he stays the fuck out of the way. If every sailor in the world was like Archie, we wouldn't have any problems. The world would just, well, you know, everything would work functionally. We could use more people like him on board. Um, so you've got a good reputation. John's got the like, I would fucking John. You can't believe what he told me last night. He told me he slept with my sister. Can't believe that shit. How did you know her name was Rebecca? You really? No, no, it's not possible. I should write my sister. You know, that's the sort of dynamic that seems to be developing aboard the boat. Um, yeah. And you guys set sail and you travel together for a little while. You head out to Solom one time as a whole crew. The voyage takes a couple of months. You head back to Arcadia. You do a loop around. By now, you guys have known each other for about a year or so. Um, Maybe, um, oh, huh? sorry, go ahead, Neil. I was going to say, you know, maybe me and Yana are on duty together, like, for a week. I don't know, maybe we got in some trouble and we're swabbing the decks or something like that. And I think, you know, in the, uh, the laboriousness of the task over a long period, maybe I can uh, think to myself, you know, if I can't get this guy to open up now, I'm never going to be able to do it. So maybe it's like, you know... I don't know, early one morning, the sun mm -hmm. just about rising off the horizon. And we're like mopping the, the deck of the ship. And I, I, I'm knackered, right? My arms are tired. I'm like taking a break. I'm leaning on one of the sides of the ship. I look over it. Uh, and um, Archie and his like whole half of the ship is like spotless by now. This guy's muscles are just fucking gleaming in the morning sunrise as he's just giving, just going, I just think, God damn it. This guy, he's so strong. So I, um, I need a break, right? So I, I pull my mop down. I like wander over to the the edge of like the unclean part of the deck, right, <laughs> where it's still re waiting for me to mop it. Just I don't want to step on his like really, really clean uh, section. And say, wow, Archie, you almost done over there. I look over to him, and I say, you still need me to help me out? You still need me. To Need me to help you out, right? uh, John? I mean, or uh, you're gonna be getting on it. Oh, I, I, I can do it myself, Archie. You don't have to go out of your way. You, you are mighty fine at the task, though. Look at this. I've never seen the deck looking so clean. I'll head over to John and like put my like massive hand on his shoulder and I'll look him in the eye with like the blue eyes, and I'll be like, "Listen, John. Been on this ship together for a bit now." If your hands worked half as fast as your tongue, maybe you could get a little bit more shit done around here, huh? Listen, Ellie, you might be right, but uh, we all have our talents. Yours is clearly for uh, mopping decks. Or beating folk, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing you in a fight yet. I'm quite you could handle yourself, though. But, um... I'll look back at him. Not offended, just that same stern look, but I'll just say... You seem like a guy who likes to float through life, you know? I feel like I've been in more fights than you could possibly imagine. I'll just I'm turn sure you have. And... Oh, okay. Well, I guess I trudge back over to my mop and, like, pick it back up and resign back to mopping the deck. And, um, you know, maybe, um, I don't know what Archie does when he's finished with his half of the task, if he just takes the time to maybe watch the sea or if you go to head back down deck yeah. but 
when you he likes when you to like on. lean over a little bit and just look out into the sea waiting like new command okay so i like after a while you know it's maybe been half an hour since that exchange i'll i'll mop back over to that direction i say you know what archie you're wasted on this place you know it's been how long has it been now since i joined a few months a year maybe <sighs> you can really you know got better things to do with your life than be stuck here for the next what 40 years Surely there's some way for you out of this. I've only known this life, John. It gives me something to do. Back before I did this, back before I served people, I was out. I, I, I had no, I had no purpose. I had nothing. Um, what did you do? Did you the just... Captain Life was a little bit rough on me, but at least here on the sea, I can feel the waves. I have something to do every day, and I can be good at it. That's what I care about. I know you may care about the drinks and the women that you talk about and the adventures. Yes, true. But I'll be stuck here. I made a mistake, and I have to put up with it. We all make mistakes, Archie. You shouldn't be condemned to this for the rest of your life for one mistake. How bad could it have been? Who, who's the arbiter of all this that says that you have to work for this ship for the rest of your life? I'm indebted to a rich family in Clydesdale. They'll own me for the rest of my life. That's what I have to do. I wronged them, and now I serve them. That's how things go. It's around this point, as Archie's telling you the story, that Captain, not yet Captain, that John sees in the horizon smoke rising. You guys are headed to Shirebrook after having come back from Solemn, dropped off some supplies on Redport, picked up some new things. You're headed to Shirebrook, then you're headed to Whiteshore. You're making the rounds along the coast to sell your goods. And you've uh, arrived at Shirebrook, or you're arriving at it. But the amount of smoke rising from the town is way too much. You're, you're used to seeing chimney smoke, right? All cities have a certain amount of smoke rising from them. Everyone's got fire going in order to uh, build their, work their kitchens, to cook their food, to craft their weapons. There's endless needs for fire, and it's all powered by wood and coal, essentially. So it produces a lot of smoke. You're used to seeing smoke from towns. As the sun is rising in this morning, and as you guys are approaching Shirebrook, the plumage of smoke resembles something closer to a forest fire. There is no way that a town can produce this amount of soot in the air and things be going well. So, so I, uh, yeah, as Archie's sort of talking to me, like, I kind of like look away from him and just catch a glimpse of all the, the smoke. So sort I'm of not really listening anymore to what he was saying. And I sort of turn back to him and say, Archie, is that where we're meant to be going? I say, pointing off at the in the distance to, to Shirebrook. It doesn't look right to me. I've been there before. It didn't look like that last time. Archie, the dutiful sailor that he is, knows exactly what to do in a situation like that. Um, he realizes that nobody else on the ship seems to have taken notice. Um, the person in the crow's nest has probably fallen asleep again, as he usually does. Mm -hmm. So Archie will immediately drop his mop, he'll immediately drop his conversation with John and head over to the captain to inform him. Yeah. I, I think I just hold, hold my mop sort of like not really, just like mopping the same spot a mm -hmm. hundred times over and over as I like stare at the smoke rising from Shirebrook. The ship trims its sails to lower its speed and floats closer to Shirebrook. The whole crew gathers round to see what the hell is going on. And as the town comes into view, you can see it is the blackened, charred, ruined remains of the town you guys have visited countless times. This place is not just sacked, not just sieged. This place is ruined entirely. This does not bode well. And your captain very quickly makes a decision about what to do. He decides to turn back and head back to Redport. 
He tells you all that who, if Shirebrook is in this situation, something's going on. Something weird has happened, something unusual. We might be able to go to Whiteshore, but Whiteshore might be the same way. And if this was done by pirates, maybe they came to Shirebrook and they're headed towards Whiteshore and we don't want to run into them. If it's done by armies, then we need to report back to Redport before the armies get there, if that's where they're headed. If this is done by some sort of mad mage, then maybe there's still magical effects happening and we don't want to get any closer. We're turning around and we're heading home. And so the ship drops anchor, no, doesn't drop anchor, uh, throws the wheel around, puts the sails back out in full and heads back to Redport. The few day voyage there is one of tension and quiet. No one's certain what we're going to find when we get to Redport. Yeah. The captain very intentionally takes the long way, sailing first close to Rockwave and then all the way around to Redport, just to make sure that civilization here is still intact. You get to Rockwave, you see that sure enough, the town is fine. Um, everything seems totally normal. So you sail on past the Patchwood and the Grazing Meadows and the Ivywood and make your way back to Redport, um, which is still fine and intact and no one seems any the wiser. As the crew disembarks, word travels quickly. It appears you are the first ship to arrive in Redport with news of this, and no one has arrived by land yet, so you are the bringers of information. Um, everyone is allowed to disembark. Uh, you all get shore time, as long as you all come back to the boat at the end of the day. So what is it that the two of you do um, when you get your shore leave here in Redport? after seeing Shirebrook in ruins and tatters. Well, I guess Archie's probably been, I mean, everyone's been a bit quiet, I think. Perhaps he's been a little bit quieter than usual these last few days. And, you know, the last thing that he kind of said to me was this sort of opening up slightly a little bit about what happened to him beforehand. So I think before I get short leave, I'm going to go down to the the quarters or whatever where, where, where he would be. And I'll come and, you know, come to his bunk and say, uh, hey Archie, me and a couple of the lads, we you know, get some drinks, I'm sure, if you wanna come, maybe we can, uh, I'm sure all the locals wanna hear our stories, you know, maybe we can uh, get some free drinks or something. I realize that in times like these, there's usually not a lot of work to be done on the boat. Um, and even though I don't really like being on land as a crust of water, um, I also don't really like leaving, I, I don't really like staying behind alone. I like being with the group, you know, raising morale and everything, so. I'll just nod and tag along. As we're walking off the the boat, I'm going to put a hand around Archie and say, you know what, Archie, this is where it all began for me. This very dock here. I was sat just on that roof over there when uh, this beautiful ship, you never seen anything like it, pulled up. Captain came out in his fancy coat. The crew was all well-armed and gleaming. The ship was beautiful. The sails, grand. I fell in love with it there and there. I still remember it now. You know, if I close my eyes, I can smell it. I can smell it. Alright, it's the same place, so it's, maybe it's just I'm smelling the same thing, but... This is an important deal for me. Yeah. Whereabouts, uh... Like, didn't you say... I as, lower my voice a little bit. As you move through the Go crowd, on. Archie, you spot the Roan family here in Redport. Uh, there's a whole herd of horses that they are trying to... Well, not... Their servants are trying to corral onto a ship. And there is... Old Lord Roan, years later, being making money off of your hard labor, um, moving some horses onto cargo, he glances over, doesn't even seem to recognize you as you hop off this boat with all these people, um, continues going about his work, even though his eyes clearly passed across with just no recognition whatsoever. Um, what do you think first, and then do second when you see... Lord Roan, the your theoretical owner um, here. Um, I think I'll freeze up a little bit. I'll like stop in my step as the like group kind of moves along, and John is still kind of close to me, so he kind of knows this. And my eyes will widen in a way that like this is like really unusual for Archie. Um, you know, Archie will just kind of tilt his head a little bit and try to make eye contact with the Roan family. And like all these memories of not only the story with Amber, but also the times 
that he was mistreated by nobles when he was out on the streets and um uh, all that thought of all the work that he's been doing and the comfort that they've been enjoying um kind of come rushing towards me and I just kind of freeze up and I just try to I just try to catch just try to catch his his eye you know I just want to make eye contact with this person to see how he would react uh, give me a charisma check to see if you can draw if like your eye contact is strong enough for him to recognize it and like look at you closely or if you're just some weirdo in the crowd uh, yeah you stare at him you try to get him to meet your gaze and at one moment like his eyes flick over you for the briefest of moments but you can see there's no recognition at all it's blank and void and quickly moves on to the rest of the crew that's around him you get this, this, this sensation or this notion that he's like making sure the filthy sailors are staying far enough away from him that they're not going to steal his stuff He's, like, checking for the social distance between him and these, like, lower-class <laughs> seamen. So I think I I notice Archie stop, right? Like, he's almost, like, mouth agape, like, staring at this guy. And I'll just stop and look over at these Roman nobles and say, You know this guy, Archie? Hey, yo, what's up with you? You know him? Rowan. Yeah. I washed his undergarments for years, and he doesn't even recognize me. Watch this. Wait, this is... I look back to the group. They're probably... Maybe the rest of them haven't noticed, so I lower my voice a little bit. Wait, is this the guy? I'll take a step towards him, and uh, I'll nod, but I, like, I'll still be looking in the direction of him. This is the guy. We gotta do something, Archie. He's in town. This is fate. How often do we get surely for a whole day? With everything that's going on in Shirebrook? I'm telling you, mate. We gotta do something about this. This is where it all started for me. What, I was just saying. I was just... You remember me. I was just saying. I was saying it to, to Carl. You remember. It was just a minute ago. This is... I can't believe it. It's the gods, Archie. It's the gods. I look up to the sky. I'll just turn to John and I'll say, I don't believe in no gods, but right now I really believe that his face should hit the pavement. Look, look at him. Not here. Not here. Here, let's, uh, you go and, you go and get a drink. Your good buddy John, I'll keep an eye on him. I can, I can be quiet. Look at you. He, he might recognize you. Stomping around like that. I can stay hidden. Here you go on. I'll meet you in the, I'll meet you in the rusty bucket. And I will uh, slink into the into the crowd. I'll slowly move along with the rest of the crowd, but I'll still be eyeing um, the nobleman the entire time. Mm -hmm. The crowd of the sailors slowly moves in the direction of the rusty bucket, uh, and everyone else around you is like happy to tell any passers-by like don't go to Shirebrook there's something wrong there and starting to spread like crazy rumors someone's like a dragon destroyed Shirebrook and someone else like a crazed wizard he cast web in the streets of Shirebrook and then they all set on fire and the whole town burned it was terrible you know it, random bullshit stories half the sailors are like intentionally spreading false stories just to get a chuckle out of the crowd because like now they'll always be confused about the truth is and it's hilarious to the sailors um, other ones are just moving along to get to the rusty bucket. Do you go all the way in, um, or do you like wait outside? Oh shit! Is this at me? That was at you, yes. yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I totally zoned out for that. I'm so it's sorry. It's gonna happen a whole bunch. Don't even worry about it. So on the way to the rusty bucket. <laughs> All the sailors, yeah. like, spreading false rumors about how Shirebrook burned. Some people are saying dragons did it. Some people are saying wizards yes. did it. Um, yes. And they quickly move into the buck rusty bucket to have, like, a drink. Do you go all the way in with them, or are you hanging out outside? I think I'll be hanging around. I'll, I'll get a drink, but I'll, like, hang around at the sidelines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, yeah. You can get a drink inside and, like, hang out at the window or at the door looking out. Uh, John, what do you do? I want to find out where this guy's staying and what he's doing. I want to follow him. 
Yeah. After all the horses are loaded in, Lord Roan shakes hands with the person, uh, probably the ship captain or uh, a quartermaster or some sort of merchant in charge of the ship, uh, and then heads off not to the rusty bucket, but to the nice tavern, like three or four doors down. That's, um, you know, the, the golden pillow. Mm, the golden pillow. Um, mm. Does this place have rooms as well? I mean, I've been in Redport, I would know. Does he look like no, he could no, be staying golden, here, or would he be staying somewhere else? It's just a tavern. Um, if they're staying in town, if they don't live in town, they're probably staying at one of the inns, like, further inland, not, like, right here on the docks. Uh, this is just a place for, like, wealthy noblemen to, like, come and hang out, maybe exchange some drinks and some words, maybe a few games of dice or chance or cards or whatever. Um, it's more of a socializing place. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so if we're going to do something, we probably need to do it while he's here before he leaves town and goes somewhere else. Like, we've only got a day shortly, if you said, right? Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I sort of try and get a look through the windows. You say, like, what, he's playing cards in there or something? He's playing dice? Uh, yeah, you can watch him walk into the place. If you come by a window, you can see uh, Lord Roan sits down at a table. His wife has come and sat next to him. Across is another couple... And the, the two gentlemen are having a drink, and then you can see one of them set, like, a deck of cards down at the table. And the other one goes, ah! And uh, cards are dealt out as a tuxedoed butler or waiter comes over and brings them beverages and some delicious pork samosas. Okay. I want to look at the deck of cards he's using. Does it look custom made? Does it look like maybe they're from town here it looks like a cheap deck of cards that someone probably picked up in town yeah okay so see i want to remember the back of the cards i want to remember what they look like and i want to head to the market the marketplace and see if i can't try and buy the same deck of cards there is a printer in town who uses uh wood block to print the same deck of cards over and over and over again as long as you've got the ink and the card you just you've got this wood block that's got um a back of the card design on it, and then you've got 52 wood blocks that like will have the front of the card. And so they'll just like press copies of the front of the cards, and then they'll press copies of the back of the cards on all these things, and then just sell cards. It's one of the, it's the services one person offers. So you can buy the practically the same deck as everyone else. You know, the exact positioning and cutting of the cards is gonna make each deck ever so slightly different, but you'd have to really know your deck of cards to be able to tell the difference between one and the other. Sure. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'll buy a deck of cards. I don't know how much money I've got, but I assume I can. You've got enough for a, a deck of cards, yeah. Problem is, I, I grab my deck of cards, I pocket them, and I look up and down at myself. You know, I look dirty, right? I don't look like. Yeah, there's no I way you're going like to get can... into that building. Yeah. Um, do they have, like, like a wash area at the Rusty Bucket? Or would I, if I want to get cleaned up, would I have to. There's a fountain get a room. somewhere that you can go and wash yourself off in, like many other sailors do. But it's do I feel like if I were to wash off, I'd be able to get in, or if I would still be too? No, you would need the yeah, right clothes, some. and the moment you open your mouth, they would hear your like low-lying sailor accent, not the like fancy noble. Well, I could maybe put on an accent then. Hi, hello there. My name is John Winters. This might even be the first time I come up with my surname. Um, alright. I grab my cards. I'm gonna run back to the Rusty Bucket where the rest of the group and Archie are. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I hurriedly come in and I, I sort of, like, wave a hand at the bartender to bring me a drink. And I sort of, like, pull up a chair, spin it around, so I'm sitting on the chair backwards like a really cool guy. And I whisper in Archie, I say, I followed him, Archie. He's in the golden pillow. Guy's playing cards. You're sitting there working away your entire life and he's gambling away the money you're making. Um, Archibald kind of rub his knuckles a little bit. There's still a lot of anger. There's still a lot of, like, resentment. He's cooled down a little bit, but at this point he's kind of buying into what John's saying and um, he's, he feels that, like, injustice, especially because of the, like, disparity of, like, rich and the working Definitely, and yeah. um, and he just turns to John and says what were you thinking 
Because I was thinking I could go over there and, you know, bash his skull in. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm sure this motherfucker deserves it, but, uh... You go there, you beat him up, you probably just end up serving another 40 years, John. Uh, Archie, that's not... That's not the way. There's gotta be something else we can do. It's just a piece of paper, you know. It just says that he owns your... He owns your work. Maybe we could get it off him. Archie remembers the last time that, um, someone tried to clue him in on a job like this. In fact, on the exact same target that John is now. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> trying to have him fuck over. Um, but he's worked with John a while now. Um, and honestly, at this point, the, the, the anger towards um, the anger towards this, this, this nobleman just gets him to a point where even if he gets caught again, even if something happens again, at least he'll not repeat the same mistake he made last time. And this time we'll actually throw him out the window. <laughs> we'll so, some favors. Yeah. Archie will just nod. And, right. um, I guess he'll see if he'll get fucked over again or not. He doesn't. Listen. I guess he doesn't truly really care at this point. Archie, finish your drink. Let's let's go and talk. And I will like, I, the bartender brings me my drink, and I'll like swig it and like hand it to Carl or whatever, one of the other sailors. And I put around, have an arm around Archie and like get him up from his chair and um, maybe go to a quieter part of the inn, or maybe we just go and like stand outside in the courtyard or something like that. Archie will finish his like half full drink. In an incredibly quick manner, and just drop the drop the jug and follow along with John. All right. So I got an idea. They're playing cards and they're gambling. I pull out the deck of cards from my pocket. These are the same cards. Now I'm quick with my hands. I think I could I could cheat him, right? If I. The problem is though. Well, there's two problems. Number one, they won't let us in there. Look at the state of us. We don't look anywhere near fancy enough for the golden pillow. Uh, secondly, how do we, how do we get him to, to bet your, your servitude? It's, it's kind of weird to bring up unless we both go in there and demand to bet for it. But I feel like if he saw your face, he would, you would know something's up, no? Archie will think a little bit. He's a little bit slow, but he will suggest that, um, you know, I know that he used to go to this place, and he's there with a lot of friends, and those friends, what those, what those people think of him, that means, that means a lot to this guy. Mm. And I have a lot of pretty interesting stories from his home, you know, that I think he'd be very embarrassed to hear his friends here, so maybe we can convince him to engage in a bet that way. Interesting. What, you think we... Maybe, what? Bust in there, or wait for them all to leave? Challenge them to a bet? Archie will think a little bit longer. Um, still resisting the urge to just go in there, lift this guy up and throw him out the window. Um, and... He'll say, I have nothing to lose, John. Uh, you're the one who seems to have the fast tongue, though. Yeah. This is it's a dangerous place, though, you know? Surrounded by guards here. It could go wrong easily. We, we blow our load. It doesn't work out. He doesn't take the bait. We'll never see this guy again. I look, I look over to the dock at the ship. I say, you know, um, I was thinking of moving on. Not now, maybe in a year or something, but with what we saw today and all of this, maybe I, we could just leave, you know? If this works out, you wouldn't need to go back to the ship, right? You'd be a free man. What if, uh, what if we hold around in town for a few days? We follow this guy home. If we catch him on the road, mm, you could make him beg to let you free. Mm. Maybe you're more your way of doing things. Archie likes this. 
He'll nod. He'll smile a little bit. If I don't work on the ship anymore, I'll have nothing. I like being out on the waves, you know? It feels nice. It's calming out there. It's like nobody can sneak up on you and... I don't I know. Like I, the, I, I like I, I like the movement. I get it. So, I get it, Archie. I like the sea too. But uh, there's a whole world of ships out there, you know? You don't have to resign yourself to this one for the rest of your life, you know? If we uh, do go through with this plan, then, you know, we get a few coins along for it. I'm sure that this guy doesn't walk with an empty purse. You know, we get a few coins. We live life large for a little while. We can find another boat to work on. But this time as a free man. Better than working for um, the captain up there. You know, he's a nice enough guy, but he's used to treating you like a servant. You think that's going to change just because we rip up some piece of paper? I'll just look at John and I'll say, I'll go along with this, but you never leave my eyesight. If you do, I'll crush your skull. And he gets what he deserves. I don't care about anything else. You think I'm stupid, Archie? You think I want to get in a fight with you? No way. So I, you know, I ain't got much respect for most folk out here. But you know, you're a decent guy. It took me a while to get through to you, but now that we're speaking, you know, I'm really feeling something here, Archie. I think we're going to be good friends. This is going to be good. I want to help you. This isn't, this isn't for me. I want to help you. You deserve better than this. The best sailor I ever worked with, let me tell you, and I've worked with a lot. Keep your flattering for when we're inside. I just want to work on a boat again and not be indebted to this piece of shit anymore. Yeah, well, if he's got enough coin on it, we can buy our own boat, eh? I slap you on the shoulder. All right, so what do you think? We, we bail, we watch him, we ambush him on the road, or this guy used to travel with guards, do you know? Um, he gets careless at night. He has guard. He he's friends with the guards. He has them around, but he'll usually travel on his own. Usually because he wants his privacy. If you know, he finds a young lady on the way. Um, piece of shit. I think um, it, we can definitely ambush him on the way home if things are still the way that they are, or the way that they were. All right. Okay. So um. Maybe it works the first way. I'm gonna see if maybe they'll let me in there. Maybe we can do this the easy way. If not, we just follow that. I reckon he's probably staying in one of the villages around Redport somewhere. He'd probably get himself nice and drunk. He'll walk at home. It's only a small walk, you know, maybe half an hour, an hour. Maybe he's got a man with him or something. We can take them, you can take them, Archie, look at you. Rage like that, you can take 10 men. Um, I've taken 10 men, don't worry. Yeah, I bet you have. I, um, you, maybe, um, well, you come with me. I'm going to, I'm going to see what I can do. And I will, uh, I head to the fountain in the middle of the courtyard or whatever outside the tavern. I'm going to, like, I, I take off my, my jacket. I like unbutton my shirt. I'm going to like clean myself up. Like, maybe I've got a piece of soap in my bag or something. Try and like wash my hair a little bit, like make myself look a little bit more presentable. I'll put my shirt back on. It's like dirty and that, but I'll, I'll fasten my jacket tight and it's a dark jacket. So maybe I don't look as as messy as I, as I once did. Mm -hmm. And um, I make sure I've got my, my pack of cards in my, in my pocket. And um, I'm going to head over to the, to the golden pillar and I'll sort of saunter up and I, you know, Archie's with me and I'll say, All right, you, you can wait outside. And I'll head to the, to the front and say, ah, hello there, bouncer. Room for one more. All right. So I'm gonna need you to give me your very best, um, your poshest accent you can give me. Give me like a, a member of the royal family accent, Nick. One does not simply allow anyone into a tavern like this. It's uh, certainly a tavern for the upper class folks, you know. Uh, ones that uh, understand the finer things in life. And I've tried drinking at the, the rusty bucket and the other terrible places in this town, but really it doesn't quite suit my need, you know? I've heard that the Golden Pillow, however, is a place of very fine repute. 
Sending only the finest elven wines, and I would like to taste of them myself. All right. Why don't you give me a... Uh, this is the first time John is impersonating a noble. So this is going to be the a difficult check for you. I'm going to need you to make me a charisma check at, like, minus five, because this is a difficult, very difficult thing to do, to pass yourself off as a member of a different social class. I need a 26, way. right? A 21 no. uh, minus 5? I guess that's a 26. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, same it's same. I'm just rolling it from the sheet, you know. Sure, sure. Same, same. Oof. Uh, yeah, well, absolutely not. You come up and you give your very best, like, <laughs> fancy, posh accent. Um, and the bouncer on board gives you the, like, up and down... It's clear and apparent to you that this does not fly. And the bouncer then I does this. Take make, my... Before you get a chance to say anything, the hand, like the right hand of the bouncer lowers a little bit and he makes like a like a beckoning motion, like a give me some money and I'll let you in. Huh? He just I is willing to take pocket. a bribe right away. How much uh, money do I have? Not a lot. Uh, actually, no, hold on. You just arrived in port. You were in Red Port. So you took a long trip to Solemn. You got some shit. You sailed back. You're in Red Port for like a day or something. And then you left. So you have most of your money still that you would have been paid. Assuming that most sailors live port to port below all of their money yeah. every time they, they get somewhere. John certainly does. So yeah. I probably got, what, like a few gold? You're, you get paid in silver coins. So you probably have like 15 silver on hand. Okay. So I'll take like five silver out and palm into this guy's hand. Uh, he'll watch the coins without like letting his chin drop. Close his hand, put it in his pocket, open the door and say, <clears throat> Right away, right this way, my lord. Why, thank you, sir. I, uh, I saunter into the, into the bar, cast a quick glance over at this guy's table, realize that I didn't actually expect to get in. I'm not sure I've necessarily got a plan, but you know, I'll wing it. As you glance at the table, you can see that the other man that uh, Lord Roan has been gambling with collects his cards, and he and his wife are getting up and heading out to uh, say their goodbyes to the Roan family and exit the table. Lady Roan uh, leans over and starts speaking to Lord Roan quietly in his ear. As you... Probably don't let anyone in this place these days, she probably says. Uh... <laughs> All right, have I completely missed my opportunity? Like, are they already gone before I get... Like, are no, they no, already no. sort of halfway uh, out Lord the Lord Roan and Lady Roan are still seated at the table. They're former guests that they were playing cards oh. with have left. Oh, okay. I shall get myself a drink. And I shall walk confidently over to their table. And I say, uh, uh, are you looking for new players? Lord Roan sits back and goes, Oh! A gambling man, are we? <sighs> Took the last one, one for double. everything he put on the table. I'm more than happy to play, to take some more money off of someone else's hands. My dear, would you go fetch the butler? I could use another flask of, sh uh, another glass of champagne. Um, is it appropriate for me to, I think to myself, is it appropriate for me to ask this woman to get me a drink too? It's not really, but maybe it is. So. Uh, and while you're there, could you could you get me a, a black coffee? Give me a charisma check. Is this wildly inappropriate, or do you have enough charm that this is kind of like funny and cute and fun? Oh, fucking hell! Sorry. <laughs> well, the lady stops, like half stand, and looks at you, like offended that you would treat her like a servant. And Mr. Rowe, One is only joking, mom. <laughs> Surely the lad is joking, sweetheart. Uh, but we'll probably have to take everything you own for that comment, he says, and like cracks his knuckles. What's okay. your game, I... son? He's like 20 years older. He's like 10 years mm. older than you. Do you know poker? Of course. Deal. And uh, he pulls out a bag of coins and just like pulls three gold out and sets three gold coins on the table. I must, I must have my coffee first. Uh, hang on, and I'll uh, get up and go and ask for a coffee. By the time you okay. get your coffee and get back to the table, 
Uh, you can see that Lord Roan has grown impatient. You insult okay. his wife, and then you leave to go get some fucking coffee, and now you're back, and, like, his wife has reseated. He's, they've got their champagne, um, but he's pretty pissed. He's like, okay, I thought well, we were having a game, good sir. Tell me, what are your stakes? Let's play. Um, shit, I haven't got much to bet. You have literally, not, like, there's no way you have the money to bet anything that he's put on the table. He's like put three gold coins. If you start pulling out silver coins, your cover's definitely blown. Like your accent's already kind of sketchy to begin with. Um, <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> I mean, you rolled a um, two, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess, okay. Uh, shit, what do I... Um... How are you going to possibly take his, take his uh, ownership of a person? What could you possibly bet? That would be worth that. You literally don't have anything. You're gonna have to come up with some sort of like lie or con or, you know, make him believe that you have something that he might want. And I think this is probably yeah. a good time for our break. Uh, we're gonna take a break here, to come back, see how this game plays out, and then see the consequences of it a little bit later. So, see you guys on the other side.